चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं रूपतरामयम ददाति स्वपदांक आदतानुणम दंतरिदे पुनः पुनः ृष्णेपलैकुणकसिंधु रमण नयनाकुचकुलतमेतमी मधुराधर हरे कृष्ण सर्वप्रथम अस्मदे गुरु पाद पद्म नित्यला प्रविष्ट जगत गुरु श्री श्रीमद भक्ति दांत नारायण गुरु स्वयं महाराज जी के वह चरण अरविंदो में अनंत कोटि दंगत प्रणाम अर्पण करता हूँ तंत्र त्रेंडी पाठ सन्या श्री श्री श्रीमद भक्ति वेदांत त्रेंडी महाराज नाम निष्ठ संत श्री अनिरुद्ध दास प्रभु जी और समस्त वैष्णव वैष्णव के चरणों में मैं मेरा यथा के दंडत प्रणाम अर्पण करता हूँ भगवत गीता Today I was listening to the recitation of Bhagavad Gita, which is uploaded on purebhakti.com. I think Sri Pad Bhakti Dhan the Siddhanti Maharaj. He has uh, spoken the shlokas and translation. I was listening to that also. That's very good. So that they will at least hear the shlokas. Huh? Now, uh, shloka number eighteen. Antavanta. इमे देहा सोक्ता शरीरिणा अनाशिनो भारत इमे 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 देहा मटेरियल बॉडीज ऑफ द इटर्नल अनाशिना इंडिस्ट्रक्टिबल अप्रमेय इमेजरेबल शरीर एम्बॉडिड सो उक्ता आर सेड टू बी अंतवंत पेरिशेबल तस्मा देर फोर भारत अर्जुन युद्धस्व फाइट द मटेरियल बॉडीज ऑफ द जीवात्मा हु इज इटर्नल इंडिस्ट्रक्टिबल एंड इमेजरेबल आर नोन टू बी पेरिशेबल देर फोर अर्जुन ऑफ फाइट To clarify the meaning of nasato vidyate bhava, Sri Bhagwan speaks this shloka beginning with antavanta. The word sharirina has been used to describe the embodied jiva. Aprameyasya means the jivatma is very difficult to understand because it is extremely subtle, hmm. extremely subtle. Tasmat yudhasu. Means therefore fight. Based on these arguments, Krishna concludes that it is completely in, improper to give up one's swadharma, which is prescribed in shastra. Hmm. So everyone has one religion to follow. Hmm. Everyone has some uh, duty, and we have to do our duty. Uh, we cannot give up our duty whatever may be the case so here krishna is again and again telling arjuna that don't give up our uh, duty huh? so let's now uh, study the explanation of shri bhakti dandu sai maharaj um, from his most popular bhagavad gita bhagavad gita as it is and he gave us the correct interpretations of bhagavad gita previous to him many people wrote commentaries on gita but many of them tampered with the message while shri bhakti vidan sai maharaj never tampered with the message here as it is 
ಅಂತವಂತ ಇಮೆ ದೇಹ ನಿತ್ಯ ಸೂಕ್ತ ಶರೀರಿಣ ಅನಾಶಿನೋಪ್ತ ಮೇಯಸ್ಯ ತಸ್ಮಾದ್ಯುತ ಸ್ವಭಾರತ ಅಂತವಂತಹ ಪರಿಶಪದು ಇಮೆ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ದೇಹ ಮಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಬಾಡೀಸ್ ನಿತ್ಯಸ್ಯ ಇಟರ್ನಲ್ ಇನ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಉಕ್ತ ಆರ್ ಸೇಡ್ ಶರೀರಿಣ ಆಫ್ ದ ಎಂಬಾಲ್ಡ್ ಸೋಲ್ ಅನಾಶಿನ ನೆವರ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಾಯ್ಡ್ ಅಪ್ರಮೇಯಸ್ಯ ಇಮೇಜರೇಬಲ್ ತಸ್ಮಾತ್ ದೇರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಯುದ್ಧ ಸ್ವ ಫೈಟ್ ಭಾರತ ಡಿಸೆಂಡೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಭಾರತ ದ ಮಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಆಫ್ ದ ಇಂಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಟಿಬಲ್ ಇಮೇಜರೇಬಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಂಟರ್ನಲ್ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಎಂಟಿಟಿ ಇಸ್ ಶ್ಯೂರ್ ಟು ಕಮ್ ಟು ಅನ್ ಎಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಫೈಟ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಸೆಂಡೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಭಾರತ ಪರ್ಫೆಕ್ಟ್ ದ ಮಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಇಸ್ ಪೆರಿಶಿಯಬಲ್ ಬೈ ನೇಚರ್ ಇಟ್ ಮೇ ಪೆರಿಶ್ ಇಮಿಡಿಯೇಟ್ಲಿ ಆರ್ ಇಟ್ ಮೇ ಡೂ so after a hundred years it is a question of time only there is no chance of uh, maintaining it indefinitely but the spirit soul is so minute that it cannot even be seen by an enemy to say nothing of being killed i had mentioned in the previous verse it is so small that no one can have any idea how to measure its dimension so from the so from both viewpoints there is no cause of lamentation because the living entity as he is cannot be killed nor can the material body be saved for any length of time or permanently protected the minute particle of the whole spirit acquires this material body according to his work and therefore observance of religious principle should be utilized in the vedanta sutra the living entity is qualified as light because he is part of part and parcel of the supreme light as sunlight maintains the entire universe so the light of the soul maintains this material body as soon as the spirit soul is out of this material body the body begins to decompose therefore it is the spirit soul which maintains this body the body itself is important the body itself is unimportant arjun was advised to fight uh not sacrifice the cause of religion for material bodily considerations so this is uh, the message here uh, arjuna is told to fight here uh, that it is your duty to fight and uh, you should not give up fighting uh, so ಅಂತವಂತ ಇಮೇ ದೇಹ ನಿತ್ಯ ಸೂಕ್ತ ಶರೀರ ಅನಾಶಿನ ಅಪ್ರಮೇಯಸ್ಯ ತಸ್ಮಾತ್ ಯುದ್ಧ ಸ್ವಭಾರತ ಮಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಆಫ್ ದ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಟ್ ಇಂಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಟಿಬಲ್ ಇಮೇಜರೇಬಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಂಟರ್ನಲ್ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಎಂಟಿಟಿ ಶ್ಯೂರ್ ಟು ಕಮ್ ಟು ಎನ್ ಎಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಫೈಟ್ ಓರ್ ಡಿಸೆಂಡೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಭಾರತ ಸೊ ವೆರಿ ಇನ್ಸ್ಪೈರಿಂಗ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ now another argument this is all logic krishna is giving yaidam vetti hantaram yaschainam manyate hatam ubhautau na vijani to nayam hanti na hanyate yah anyone who enam this vetti knows hantaram the killer yah who also enam this manyate things hatam killed ubhav both tau te na never vijani vijanita are in knowledge na never i am this hanti na hanyate is killed neither he who thinks the living entity the slayer nor he who thinks it is slain is in knowledge for the self slays nor is slain when the embodied living entity is hurt by fatal weapons it is to be known that the living entity within the body is not killed the super soul is so small the spirit soul is so small that it is impossible to kill him by any material weapon as will be evident from subsequent verses nor is the living entity killable because of his spiritual constitution what is killed or is supposed to be killed is the body only this however does not at all encourage killing of the body the very intention is 
Yeah, someone might say that, oh, Bhaktivedanta Sai Maharaj is telling that if you kill the body, the soul doesn't die. So let's kill the bodies. How does it matter? You know? So someone may take advantage of this argument and start ruthlessly killing others. No. The Vedic injunction is Ma Hinsyat Sarva Bhutani. Never commit violence to anyone. Nor does understanding that a living entity is not killed encourage animal slaughter. Killing the body of anyone without authority is abominable and is punishable by the law of the state as well as by the law of the Lord. Arjun Haivar is being engaged in killing for the principle of religion and not whimsically. Understand. So neither he who thinks the living entity, the slayer, nor he thinks it's slain is in knowledge, for the self slays not is slain. Shri Vishnadi Thakur comments, the self is neither the subject of the act of killing nor is its object. He who thinks that the soul is the killer, that Arjuna is killing Bhishma and others, and he who thinks that the soul is killed, that Bhishma and others have been killed by Arjuna are both ignorant. No one can truly kill or be killed. Krishna elaborates on this point in the next verse. So, Yenam beti hantaram yashchainam manyate hatam Ubauto na vijani to nayam hanti nanyate Yeah, he who beti knows enam the soul to be hantaram, the killer, cha, and yeah, who manyate considers enam the soul hatam to be killed na vijanita is not in knowledge tau bhav of the two ayam this atma na hanti does not kill na hanyate is killed he who considers the jivatma to be either the killer or the killed is ignorant for the self neither slays nor is, is slain by anyone. Sarata Varshini comment. Krishna says, Oh friend Arjuna, you are an Atma and therefore you are neither the subject nor the object of the act of killing. To explain this, Shri Bhagavan is speaking this shloka beginning with the words Yayanam. One who thinks that the Jivatma kills. Example, Arjuna kills Bhishma or the Jivatma is killed, Arjuna is killed by Bhishma, is ignorant because, O oh Sakha, why do you fear achieving infamy just because ignorant people will call you the killer of your superiors? Sarada Varshini Prakashika Vritti. Shri Krishna is instructing Arjuna, you are an Atma and therefore you are neither the subject nor the object of the verb to kill. Here he is explaining that Arjuna is not the subject the killer of heroes you know, such as Bhishma on the opposite side, nor is he the object of the killing done by them. On the other hand, ignorant people who identify the self with the body consider only the gross body to be the subject and object of killing. Krishna concludes, therefore, becoming fully aware of this truth, Give up your identification with the gross body and become situated in the nature of the subject. In the nature of the self. Surrendering unto me, fearlessly engage in your swadharma for my pleasure. You should not be in ignorance about this. The same concept is stated in the Shruti. Anta chen manyate hatam, hatascha manyate hatam. Kathopanishad 1.2.19 If one who identifies the self with the body thinks that he will kill someone and one whose body is being killed thinks that he is killed, both are ignorant. Because the Atma neither kills anyone nor is killed, Verse number 20, a very 
nice verse na jayate mriyate va kada chinnayam bhutva bhavita van bhuya ajo nitya shashvato yam purano na anyate anyamane sharire i am the soul na jayate does not take birth va or mriyate die kadachit at any time na bhutva he has not come into being va not bhavita will he come into being na nor who ya repeatedly accept material bodies i am he is ajaha unborn nitya eternal shashvata ever existing and puranaha primeval sharire when the body hanyamani is destroyed na hanya de is not killed the jivatma neither takes birth nor dies nor does he experience repeated creation or growth he is unborn eternal and ever existing though primeval he remains ever youthful when the body is destroyed the jivatma is not destroyed to establish the eternality of the jivatma shri bhagwan is speaking this shloka beginning with the words na jayate in which it is proven that there is never any time when the jivatma is born or dies that there was no birth or death for the jivatma in the past nor will there be in the future is proven by the words nayam bhutva bhavita shri bhagwan is further explaining by the use of the word ajaha that the jivatma does not take birth either in the past present or future thus he establishes that jiva also existed in the past the word shashvata means that which is ever existing which is not destroyed in the past present or future therefore the jivatma is eternal if one still raises a doubt that because the soul exists for a long time he must he may be overpowered by old age shri bhagwan says in response no that is not true because he is purana although he is primeval he is ever fresh and free from the six type of types of transformation including birth and death is someone that raises the question will the soul not die even figuratively at the death of the body shri krishna answers no the soul has no relationship at all with the body sarat varshini prakashika vritti the eternal nature of the jivatma has been established in this shloka he is beyond birth and death and is eternal and ever existing he is not destroyed when the body is destroyed consequently the jivatma is devoid of the six types of transformations birth duration of existence growth procreation diminution and death in gatapanishad 1.2.18 a similar conclusion is given na jayate mriyate va vipashe nayam kutashinna vibhuva kashit ajo nitya shashato yam purano na hanyate hanyamane sharire the meaning of this shloka is the same as gita 2.20 but in this shloka There is one special word vipashchita, which means one who knows the self. Brother Aranya Gopanishad 4.4.25 also verifies this conclusion. Sava Sava Esha Mahat Aja Atmajaro Amaro Amrito Haya. The Atma is indisputably correct. Atman deathless. free from old age immortal and fearless so very nice uh, explanation krishna is giving here na jayate mriyate va kadachin nayam bhutma bhavita va na bhuya ajo nitya shashvato yam purano na hanyate hanyamane sharire Now means never. 
जायते टेक्स बर्थ मृयते डाइज वा इधर कदाचित एट एनी टाइम पास प्रेजेंट एंड फ्यूचर न नेवर आई एम दिस उत्वा हैविंग कम इनटू बीइंग भविता विल कम टू बी वा और न नॉट हुया और इज अगेन कमिंग टू बी अजहा अनबोर्न नित्या इटर्नल शाश्वत परमानेंट आई एम दिस पुराण ओल्डेस्ट न नेवर हन्यते इज किल्ड हन्य माने बीइंग किल्ड सो हियर फॉर द सोल देयर इज नीदर बर्थ नॉट डेथ एट एनी टाइम he has not come into being does not come into being and will not come into being he is unborn eternal ever existing and primeval he is not slain when the body is slain for but qualitatively the small atomic fragmental part of the supreme spirit is one with the supreme he undergoes no change like the body Similarly, the soul is called the steady or utastha. The body is subject to six kinds of transformations. It takes but it takes its birth from the womb of the material nature. So it takes its birth from the womb of the mother's body. Uh, remains for some time grows produces some side uh, some if effect, effects gradually dwindles and at last vanishes into oblivion the soul however does not go through such changes the soul is not born but because he is because he takes on a material body the body takes its birth the soul does not take birth there the soul does not die anything which has birth also has death and because the soul has no birth he therefore has no past present and future he is eternal ever existing primeval that is there is no trace in history of his coming into being under the these impressions of the book under the impression of the body we see we seek the history of birth etc of the soul the soul does not at any time become old as the body does the so called old man therefore feels himself to be in the same spirit as in his childhood or youth the changes of the body do not affect the soul the soul does not deteriorate like a tree nor anything material the soul has no by product either the by product the by products of the body the by products of the body namely children are also different individual souls and owing to the body they appear as children of a particular man the body it develops many of the body develops because of the soul's presence but the soul has neither offshoots nor change therefore the soul is free from the six changes of the body in the gatha upanishad we also find a similar passage which reads jayate mriyate va vipashchin नायम कुतश्चिन्न बभुव कश्चित अजो नित्य शाश्वतोयम पुराणो न हन्यते हन्यमाने शरीरे the meaning and purport of this verse is the same as in the bhagavad gita but here in this verse there is one special word vipashchita which means learned or with knowledge the soul is full of knowledge or full always with consciousness therefore consciousness is a symptom of the soul even if one does not find the soul within the heart 
where he is situated, one can still understand the presence of the soul simply by the presence of consciousness. Sometimes we do not find the sun in the sky owing to clouds or for some other reason. But the light of the sun is always there and we are convinced that it is there for daytime. As soon as there is a little light in the sky or in the morning, we can understand that the, the sun is in the sky. Similarly, since there is some consciousness in all bodies, whether man or animal, we can understand the presence of the soul. This consciousness of the soul is, however, different from the consciousness of the Supreme because the Supreme Consciousness is all knowable, is all knowledge, past, present and future. The consciousness of the individual soul is prone to be forgetful. When he is forgetful of his real nature, he obtains education and enlightenment from the superior lessons of Krishna. But Krishna is not like the forgetful soul. If so, Krishna's teachings of Bhagavad Gita would be useless. There are two kinds of souls, namely the minute atomic particle souls from Atma and the super soul, Vibhu Atma. This is also confirmed in the Katopanishad 1.2.20 in this verse. So, there are two kinds of souls, namely the minute particle soul, Anu Atma and the super soul, Vibhu Atma. This is also confirmed in the Katha Upanishad 1.2.20. It is way, Anu or Anihyan Mahato Mahiyan Atma Sejanto Nito Guhayam Tam Tam Akrutahu Pashyati Vita Shoko Dhatu Prasadan both the super soul, Paramatma, and the atomic soul, Jivatma, are situated on the same tree of the body within the same heart of the living being. And only one who has become free from all material desires as well as lamentation can, by the grace of the Supreme, understand the glories of the soul. Krishna is the fountainhead of the Super soul also, as it will be disclosed in the following chapters. And Arjun is the atomic particle forgetful of his real nature. Therefore, he requires to be enlightened by Krishna or by his bona fide representative, the spiritual master. Hare Krishna. So, very nice verse says going on here explaining the nature of the soul. So, Verse number 21, but we'll quickly, I think we read about Gurudev's commentary also on this verse. Veda 21. Veda vinashinam nityam yayenam ajam avvayam kathamsa purusha partha kam gateti hantikam. Partha, Katham, how ya one who Veda knows Enam, this soul, to be Avinasham, indestructible, Nityam, eternally, Ajam, unborn, Avyatma, immutable, come whom Hanti can he kill, come who can. So that Purusha person Ghateti calls to kill. Oh, Partha, how can a person who knows the Atma to be eternally blissless, blissless, birthless, immutable and indestructible, kill anyone or cause anyone to be killed? Shri Krishna is answering Arjuna. Oh, Partha, after, accept, after acquiring this knowledge, you will not be guilty of committing sin even after engaging in battle. And I will also not be guilty of inspiring you to fight. For this purpose, the present shloka beginning with Veda Vinashinam is being spoken. Here the word Nityam is an adverb. The use of the 
words avinash indestructible aja unborn and aware immutable denies that the atma can be diminished at all by acts of destruction shri bhagwan says with this knowledge how can a person like me myself kill anyone or be killed by any means in same way how can a person like you kill someone or cause someone to be killed so hare krishna so bhagavad gita very important scripture but we'll stop today here today we went to shri kalhasti the temple of lord shiva and shri kalhasti is the place where uh, lord shiva's temple was there there was shiva linga apparently there is vayu linga vayu linga means that uh, linga made from the air so there the shiva linga one elephant was serving and one uh, one who wields the cobwebs uh, so he was also serving um, and then also one uh, snake also was serving uh, and there was a fight among them so there is a very nice story there so very big temple of lord shiva lord shiva is nimnagana yatha ganga devana achyut yatha vaishnavana metha shambhu purana vidam tatha among all the vaishnavas lord shiva is the greatest a lot of people got bhakti because some of the other they followed uh, mahashivratri vrata uh, and therefore they got bhakti so today we went to the shri kalasti hmm. very big temple made of stone and uh, humongous temple actually made of stone it's a really masterpiece architectural masterpiece the main deity is not shiva hmm. so shri gurudev has also mentioned that there are different different types of shiva lingas and um, there is vayu linga this is apparently this was a vayu linga made of air uh, um, so there are different different types of lingas shri gurudev has uh, talked about it in his lectures that um, uh, just like in bhuneshwar shri gurudev says in bhuneshwar is a huge shiva linga which is famous as bhuneshwar and from whom the city takes its name uh, nearby is the temple of shyananda vasudev formerly the bhoga offered in this vasudev mandir was offered as mahaprasad to bhuneshwar mahadev and vaishnavas accepted the prasad from shri bhuneshwar although they do not accept the prasad from shri mahadev anywhere else so generally in bhuneshwar the temple of bhuneshwar is there not shiva but there is also a temple of vishnu ananta vasudev so ananta vasudev swami his mahaprasad was offered to lord shiva first they used to offer cook for ananta vasudev swami then offering to krishna then the remnants of krishna they used to offer to lord shiva so vaishnava used to go to the temple of lord shiva bhuneshwar and they used to take the prasadam there because they were sure that this was first offered to vishnu then to lord shiva understand but generally speaking if the prasad is bhoga is not offered to lord krishna first or lord vishnu first uh, and if it is offered to demigod any like any demigod first then vaishnavas will not accept that mahaprasad understand unfortunately this custom of first offering bhoga to vishnu has been stopped and now vaishnavas no longer accept shri mahadeva's mahaprasad they only accept it from the temple of Ananta Vasudev. So there is Ananta Vasudev temple, and wonderful prasadam is cooked there. Actually, they cook it in uh, earthen pots, and they give plantain leaf, so many types of chutneys, so many types of dal, and you know, rice, and uh, wonderful actually preparation. Just like Jagannath Puri Mahaprasad is wonderful there. I had the honor so many times with Shiva Dandi Maharaj and other Vaishnavas to go to Bhuneshwar. I go with Shiva Dandi Maharaj, Shiva Shridhar Maharaj. Also, I went, I think, and um, because after Navadhi Parikrama, devotees used to go to uh, Jagannath Puri. Shiva Dandi Maharaj used to take the devotees of Bangalore. I used to accompany them from Bangalore to Jagannath Puri and um, uh, also to Bhuneshwar. Bhuneshwar is the capital of uh, Odisha. 
so um, so today we went to shikala hasti uh, and um, kala actually means snake kala means death and snake literally means death so it's called kala hasti means an elephant in sanskrit hasti means elephant in hindi they call hatti or hathi Marathi they call Hatti, uh, but in elephant. Elephant is the biggest animal. And uh, so it actually, actually means that uh, one who uses the cow web. Huh? So spider. Spider is called Shri. Huh? So there's a story actually. And also there is actually Lord Shiva's devotee by the name Kannappa. Now this Karnappa uh, is a very famous um, Shiva devotee. I never understood what his story is actually. Um, uh, but there was actually that Karnappa used to live there um, in uh, Shikala State. Karnappa was a staunch devotee of Shiva and is closely associated with Shikala Shura Temple. He was a hunter and is believed to have plucked his eyes to offer to Shikala Stishwar. Linga, the presiding deity of Shikala city is also considered one of the 63 Nayanars or holy Shaivite saints, the staunch devotees of Lord Shiva. Kannappa Nayanar is a South Indian saint, also known as Tinnappan, Dina, Kannappa, Tinnappan, Dhira Bhakta, Kannappan, Tinnan, Kannappan, Dinnaya, Kannaya, Kannappa Nayanar or Nayanmar. Kannan, Bhakta Kannappan or Dhiran. So many names he has actually. In Tamil and I think Telugu and Kannada. He was born in a Vyad hunter family. He was hunting the animals. The son of Raja Naga Vyad. His father's name was a Raja Naga Vyad. And his wife is Uddu, Uddupura, a modern Uddukuru near Sri Kalasthi in present day. Uttukuru, Rajampet, Andhra Pradesh. Hmm. So, uh, he was born in hunter family. His father was a notable uh, Geraint among the hunting community. Uh, Geraint. Now, this uh, word Geraint actually um, a manager actually. Huh? Geraint actually means manager. But they use this word which has actually um, Latin origin or something. Uh, maybe it is that has some Latin origin. Anyways, um, among their and a great Shaiva devotee of Sri Kartike, means he was a devotee of son of Lord Shiva. He was named Thinnan or Thiran in Tamil by his parents, which is known as to Telugu, Telugu speakers today as Dinna or Dhira, respectively. His wife's name was Neera. When Arjuna was meditating on Lord Shiva for Pashupatastra to test him, Shiva entered this forest as an animal hunter. And due to two arrows from Shiva and Arjuna killing a demon named Muka, a war started between Shiva and Arjuna. So basically, Arjun once uh, was meditating on Lord Shiva. Because Lord Shiva has one particular astra called Pashupatastra. Pashupatastra. Like Lord Brahma has Brahmastra. Lord Narayan has Narayanastra. So this Pashupatastra is a very strong weapon. And Arjun wanted to acquire it because he knows that there is going to be a fetish of war. I have to fight with Kauravas. And I must have celestial weapons because Vishma and Drona also have lots of weapons. So uh, Shiva wanted to test Arjuna's integrity. So he also entered in the forest as an animal hunter. Now there was a demon by the name Mukha. Lord Shiva shot an arrow and Arjun also shot an arrow. And um, the demon apparently died. Uh, now imagine if the arrow of Arjun and arrow of Shiva landed in the chest of that demon at the same time. So there was a debate that who killed really the demon. Because it was at the same moment it attacked the both their arrows landed in the heart of the uh, landed in the chest of the demon at the same time, killing him. So battle took place between Arjuna and Shiva. 
and Shiva was impressed by Arjuna's efforts. Shiva gave him the Pashupatastra. According to folklore, Lord Shiva also blessed him to be born as his greatest devotee in his next birth. So he is born again as a devotee in the Kali Yoga as Karnappa Nayanar and finally got liberation. So this is actually, this is called um, Kimvadanti or the local Stalapurat or folklore. Uh, understand. So Karnappa was born as a Thinnan and was a staunch devotee of the Vayulinga at Sri Kalasthishwar temple. So Vayulinga, as you, as you see that there are actually uh, five elements that like Krishna will tell in Bhagavad Gita. Bhumira pona lova yo kamano vatire vacha ankari tiyamme vinna prakritir ashtada. So, Bhumi, earth, apo, water, vayu, air. Bhumi apo nalo, anala means fire, kham means the sky. So these lingas also made of five elements. I remember Gurudev mentioning this. So she Kala Stishwar, there's a linga which is air, means I think it is uh, suspended in the air, I think apparently. Uh, being a hunter, he did not know how to properly worship Lord Shiva. It is said that he poured water from his mouth on the Shiva lingam which he brought from the nearby river, Swarnamukhi. So that river is almost dried up, we thought, saw today. But he used to bring the water from his mouth, not in any container, but he used to bring in his mouth like this, and he used to offer that water to Lord Shiva right from his mouth. He also offered Lord Shiva whatever animal he hunted, including swine flesh. Now generally, there are wild boars. So he used to offer the flesh of these boars also to Lord Shiva. But Lord Shiva accepted his offering since Thinnan was pure at heart and his devotion was true. Once Lord Shiva tested the unshakable devotion of Thinnan, with his divine power, he created a tremor and the rooftops of the temple began to fall. All the priests ran away from the scene except for Thinnan, who covered the linga with his body to prevent it from any damage. Hence, he was named thereafter as Thiram, valiant one. Thinnan noticed that one of the eyes of the Shiva Linga was oozing blood and tears. Sensing that Lord Shiva's eye had been injured, Thinna, Thinna proceeded to pluck his one eye out of out with one of the arrows and placed it in the spot of the bleeding eye of the Shiva Linga. This stopped the bleeding in the in that eye of the Linga, but to complicate matters further, he noticed that the other eye of the Linga has also started oozing blood. So Thinna thought that if he were to pluck his other eye too, he would become blind to exactly know the spot where he has to place his uh, own second eye over the bleeding second eye of the linga. So he placed his great toe on the linga to mark the spot of the bleeding second eye and proceeded to pluck out his other and only I. Moved by his extreme devotion, Lord Shiva appeared before Thinnan and stopped him from plucking his only eye and restored both his eyes. He made Thinnan the tenth of the 63 Nayanars and he referred to as Kannappa or Kannappa Nayanar. Kannappa merged into the Lingam along with Lord Shiva and Patel Moksha. So, anyway, this is actually the story because we saw the picture there. Now couldn't understand that picture. Now something is coming here because uh, Kalasthi, very famous temple. Uh, uh, you see here that Kanappa is a hunter, and he is apparently placing his toe on the Shiva Lingam to mark where the second eye of Lord Shiva is bleeding. But because he is blind in one eye, and he is now going to pluck out his second eye also. So he wants to mark that place, where to place the, my, take out my second eye and where to place it on Lord Shiva's eye. He was putting his toe there. So understand. So it may be disrespectful, but he is quite ignorant. Being a hunter, he didn't know how to worship Lord Shiva. So this particular picture is there in the temple also. Uh, anyways. So Kannappa, very uh, great devotee of Lord Shiva. Uh, apparently incarnation of Arjuna. Uh, but this is all Stalapurana. Means like these are called 
folklores or these are the uh, kim vadanti these are the local uh, version of the story yeah? so but there must be some basis understand so anyways um, uh, we should not take prashad of any other deity understand because um, yanti deva brata devan pitru nyanti pitru brata bhuteni yanti bhute ja yanti madhya jino bima in the gita it is told yanti deva brata devan pitru nyanti pitru brata and kama stetar huta jnana prapadyanti anya devata evidence that the results of demigod worship are temporary is found in padma purana and elsewhere yastu narayanam devam brahma rudradi daivatai samatpyana vikshetha sa pashandi bhavet dhruva understand means if you regard lord shiva and lord narayan to be on the same level then you become an atheist or immediately no narayan is superior narayano paro objekta narayan is superior to lord shiva and lord brahma also understand the demigods cannot relieve us from the vicious cycle of birth and death nor can they give us krishna bhakti understand the demigods cannot help us they cannot relieve us from the vicious cycle of birth and death and they cannot give us they cannot and and, and can they give us krishna bhakti uh, understand and the second point is that in padma puran demigod worship is provided for ekantik vaishnavas the performance of demigod worship is considered to be nama prad understand in padma puran one nama prad is worshiping demigods shastrik evidences are even cited in she satkriya sar dipika to prohibit ekantik vaishnavas from performing demigod worship when the opposite side heard shri gurudev's vigorous lecture they became speechless understand so here param gurudev is telling us this nice things uh, so those who worship krishna they go to krishna's planet um, bhagavata also krishna is telling antavantu phalam tesham tat bhavati alpa medasam devan devay jo yanti mad bhakta yanti mam api however the result of the worship performed by those people of meager intelligence is perishable the worshipers of the devatas devi gods attain the dev devi gods planets and my devotees attain me understand and giving up krishna giving up krishna to worship various other devatas has been called unlawful yapanyanya devata bhaktya yante shraddayan vitate api maam eva kaunte yanti avide purvakam bhagavad gita 9.23 whatever a man may sacrifice to the devatas o son of kunti is really meant for me alone but it is offered without true understanding people are worshiping demigods they are making offerings to demigods actually those offerings go to krishna only they are meant for krishna only but they are offering without true understanding so some people say that vishnu ganesh durga kali and shiva are all one and the same there is no fundamental or intrinsic difference between them they are different in name only and the result of worshiping all of them is the same however the account is not in agreement with the shastras understand no if you worship demigods you go to the parents of the demigods and if you worship uh, krishna then you go to the planet of lord krishna understand so this is uh, very very important to remember yanti deva brata devan pitru nyanti pitru brata bhutani yanti bhute ja yanti madhya jino bima hare krishna thank you so much so panchakalpa trubesh krupa sindhu gaj patanam pavane bhyo vaishnavi bhyo namo namah if anyone has any questions or comments please ask hare krishna Hey Krishna Maharaj, Dr. Anubhad Prams, thank you so much for all your time and you're always coming on to class and you're giving us your time, we much appreciate it. Actually...